Hi, again, so here I am now with the new uh, plan, a, a different plan, already watercolored on Pastel Premier. Again, you can see I taped the paper all the way around. Um, and I have my value plan. I have my darks, I have my midtones, and then my lights are the way of the paper. That's my plan. I might change it as I go. So I pretty much pre-selected my palette. I might change it as I put the pastel on the paper because whatever color I put down is going to look different against what the underpainting is. So it's really hard to know till I get started. So I'm making some gentle sweeps, looking at what I'm doing, deciding do I want to leave the underpainting? Do I want to cover it completely? I might not even have that answer at this moment. I start putting down color. And um, right now I'm pushing myself Towards the darks, um, I'm using like dark greens of different values and working that way, just trying to establish like how dark is my darkest darks going to be. I'm actually maybe in areas going darker than my underpainting. Um, and then I can always go back to light. The beauty is that we're not locked in with pastel. Um, we can always make changes, which is what I love about it. Um, so here I am leaning into um, some of my, you know, dark blue greens. Let's see if I have any others. I'm a little dark root. Oh, I like that one. It's a warm dark blue. Uh, I'm sorry. It's a warm green. Uh, so I'm enjoying that. And I think that's going to work better, actually, than the cool. Um, let's see. So I'm kind of filling in. A lot of noise, I call it. A lot of distraction in the background. And right now, I don't care. I'm just laying in, you know, my first layer of what's going to be. Um, and at this point, I'm gonna take a look. And the next thing I'll do is think about what I want to do for a midtone. Um, and so uh, I'm going to look for some cooler colors that will match up with my value plan and I'm making a little mark and squinting and if it's not jumping out at me I tell myself that that's a color that might work you know it's a value of a color that might work so I'm going to try it here and like right that's jumping right there that mark I'll make it stronger so you can see it um, but that's not working so well so I'll see if I have a different color that maybe would work so here, I'm, as you can see, I'm going for blues. And, you know, you might say, what? Aren't flamingos peach or pink, red? They are, but I want to establish the cool tones first. And then I will look for the, the local color in a similar value. So that's too dark. I made the mark and it's jumping. Too dark. That's too light. It's Goldilocks. So what's in between? Got to find uh, one that's tough, one that's in between. Maybe I have one here, let's see. That, that could work. Now, if I didn't put the blue down or the purple underpainting, then the cool tone wouldn't read cool enough. Okay, so um, again, I'm laying in my cool tones first. And I'm, you know, doing this all over. I'm not one to work from the top down. I, I generally work all over. I work in a big circle around my painting um, because I need the whole thing for me. I need it to harmonize. And if I start from the top down, I just don't understand how, what I'm going to do in this corner. But if I'm working all the way around, I can kind of bring it all to a close, hopefully. Um, so wherever I'm feeling that there's cool, cooler light or cooler tone is where I'm going to use the cooler color. I mean, I'm simplifying and keeping it right now for the purpose of the demo to one color, but I'll, I'll move around. Like here's a, a, a blue that has more red in it. Um, it has a little more violet in it, even though it's still plenty blue. So there I'm going to use it and kind of connect my shapes a bit. Um, and 
let's see, it's very cool, the bird is very cool right in this area. But then when, when objects like bushes or animals, um, they're on the ground, the ground gets a lot of light that's kicking back up. So this area will end up not being as cold in temperature as the birds that are further away from the ground. And I'm careful about that when I bring the painting to a finish. I, I kind of keep that fact in mind that as things are closer to the ground, there's going to be some more light um, and warmth coming up and influencing um, you know, what is closest to the object, and that's going to be these birds. So um, the, the foreground land is, is quite light, but it's not as light as the top of the bird's feather. So I have to balance those values as well. But I won't even be anywhere near ready to, ready to put the lights on until I establish the darks and the midtones. So, you know, I keep to that plan um, as best I can. Um, I need a dark blue because I know that this is a shadow being cast onto the ground. So for some reason, I start with that. I don't keep only one color in a shadow area. I tend to put many colors in. Um, I like some of the watercolor effect through here. So I might only hit a little bit of pastel in those areas. Um, look at me, I look like an octopus, right? I'll keep all these working pastels in my hand. Um, let's see, I'm gonna keep establishing both the, the temperature and the value as the important factors, not worrying specifically about the colors that I use. Um, as long as the value's right, it should be okay. Maybe a little bright. Let's go a little darker. Too dark. Actually, I'm going to keep that pretty cool in here. Um, let's see. For purposes of my remembering, I'm just going to mark. Their tails are quite saturated and usually magenta, but because I, I want the colors to all work together and I'm making the birds in this painting lean towards a more saturated orange, more than I normally do in my regular paintings, I'm, I'm gonna just mark these local colors here, um, putting down value where I know their tails to be. It's just a marker, it just will give me a kind of a visual memory of where I have to fill in. Um, let's see. And then I know there's a nice light, light fur value up on top here. So I'm putting this in. Um, looking for areas where I just want that. Because I feel like if I have that warmth bouncing around, that's going to be a great compositional element to conduct where I want the viewer to be looking. So there's some red up in here. It's dark, it's cool. So I'm using this stick. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's really, um, I don't know what to call it. It's a dark purpley-ish uh, red. <laughs> uh, let's see, I want to fill in here with a little color. That's too dark. I'll go back with my color. I love this area, I'm gonna leave that I mean, oftentimes when I'm home and I'm working and I'm working more slowly, I really, you know, take time with the watercolor. Um, I really let the um, uh, watercolor speak to me and tell me where where I want my, you know, where I want my emphasis to be in in the painting and the design. And I continually ask myself, what am I trying to say here? Why am I painting this? What's the, what's the purpose of my making this painting? And for me, this is all about light, and it's about shapes. Um, and it could be flamingos, it could be fish, it could be rocks. It's all the same to me. And um, you know, I'm just looking at the shapes of everything, the shapes of things. There's a very bright, almost light there. Now, right now, I've used saturation, a lot of saturation. Um, as you can see from the sticks in my hand and maybe the sticks in my palette, I'm going to, at some point now, what I do is I go to my neutrals. I mean, this is just an easy way. These two boxes are an easy 
way to look at neutrals. Um, they're blue earth pastels and one's a warm set and one's a cool set. Um, I use the Terry Ludwig essential gray set as well um, often, but by using grays now on top, I'm picking values that are very similar to what I've already put down. I can tone down some of those colors. Sometimes I don't want so much saturation. So by using the same value gray in, in a similar temperature, I can kind of calm the eye and, and keep it painterly. I'm not trying to render, you know, every bird and this is not this is not essentially a botanical study of animals or what no, botanical is the wrong word, but nature study of the accuracy of the animal. Um, for me, it's just about the kind of the, the gesture of the birds. Um, they're, they're group animals. They like to be together. So do we as humans. Too bad we can't all be together today because I'd love to hear some questions. I like breaking up my concentration with people asking me questions. So I'm going to keep pretending people are maybe asking me questions. What would people be asking me aside from, you know, what value and all. Um, but I don't know if I spoke about this in the introduction, but um, you know, when I photograph, again, I, I think the, fur the further out you can get from your subject is you're better off because, especially if what you're looking to do is um, think about patterns of things. If you want a pattern of birds or a pattern of fish or lily pads or whatever, you can always get closer in. You can always crop later. Um, here I've got that red in here. I just like the red kind of all connecting. So that's going to be a nice feature there. They have, they do a very, very dark, almost black um, spots under their wings. These are Terry Ludwigs I'm picking up now and I'm hitting, you know, those, I'm not going to use black. I, if I have to, I will. One thing I already know, I mean, when I, when I find the center of my painting, this is a very, very dark, dark right there from the watercolor. And I know right away, I don't want it to stay quite as dark value because the eye is going to go right there. So here I already pulled it back in value as far as not so dark. And I want to go even a shade lighter. Now this is a, a lighter version of a green, I don't know, but I just, I just want to, and I very rarely rub. That's a question people ask, do I rub? Very rarely, but in this case, I just want to pull the dark away because I just don't want the eye to stay right in this area. To me, it's grabbing my eye and thinking abstractly, and I'm thinking, mm, I'm going right there. I want to tone that down. So I'm going to start just recarving the bird. I mean, the nice thing is, too, if your drawing gets off, you can redraw. You know, sometimes I'll take the edge of a pastel. I don't have my hard sticks or the other side of the room, but you know, for argument's sake, let's pretend. And I can show you here. If I'm not sure I like the contour of the bird, I will redraw. Now, sometimes when I do that, I fall in love with the line. I happen to love line in a painting. And you know, sometimes I'll start just using a hard pastel, not to outline the whole thing, but you know, and maybe it's a little too early in the painting to do this, but what I ask myself when I do it is where do I want the eye to look? And perhaps that's where I want a strong line, a strong edge, and maybe I want some color that's gonna bring the eye there. Now, I put that there, this bright red, right on the edge where the bird is, and that tells the viewer this bird's in front of that bird. That's the first thing. So maybe I like it. I'm not going to do any more with it because it's way too early to actually start doing that. But I just wanted to show you eventually, because if you look at my other paintings, flamingo paintings in the series, I do very carefully choose where, what my edges are. And sometimes I use line and color to note the edge. Sometimes I use um, just a brush of a, of a breakthrough color. Um, for instance, I might take the blue that's in the bottom of this bird and break right through that line because I want to tone, and that toned it down right away. But that's a decision I really wouldn't be making until I'm finished kind of filling in the values and the colors of the, of the birds. Right now, it's really important to me to get the foreground in the, the land. 
because that's going to uh, also determine how light my lights will get. 